Well, hello, everyone. I'm Matt Williamson at Williamson NFL. Go check out all my stuff there on a lot of different outlets, but enjoy chatting with you guys every day. And it's time to really dig into this Dallas Cowboy team. And first off, it just came out when right before I hit record on this, that Brandon Cooks is out. Uh, we know Parsons and Lawrence, by far their best two defensive players, is out, which makes it a pretty nondescript Dallas defense. Um, but it's a good time to get the Cowboys. I think that's the the bottom line. So here's some matchup overview stuff. The Steelers, as you know, are 3-1, and one, haven't lost yet at home. Um, they still have seven more home games on the docket, which is great. They've outscored their opponents by 22 points. Dallas is 2-2. Two and two. But both their wins have come on the road. They are a minus seven point differential. How weird is this? I mean, it's kind of little little things that make me happy. But Steelers are producing 4.9 yards per play. Dallas gives up 5.4. Dallas's offense gives up 5 or point or Dallas's offense produces 5.4 play, per play. And the Steelers defense gives up 4.9. So the Steelers produce 4.9 and allow 4.9. Dallas produces 5.4 and gives up 5.4. You don't see that very rare, very often. Um, turnover ratio, this has not been real favorable to the Steelers lately. They're down to a plus two. Dallas is plus one. Uh, still, the, the Steelers have only turned the ball over three times this year. Dallas has surrendered 282 more rushing yards than they've produced and are giving up a yard 1.1 yards more per carry. That's a massive discrepancy. They also have six more rushing touchdowns allowed than they've produced. Sears, on the other hand, are giving up just 3.7 yards per rush attempt, but they're also producing just 3.7 yards per rush attempt. They do produce 41.7 more rushing yards than their opponents, though. So, the run game's going to be huge in this. Cowboys committed 11 penalties last week. Pittsburgh has committed three more penalties than their opponents this season, but the Steelers' opponents averaged 15.3 more penalty yards per game than Pittsburgh thus far. Time of possession. Even though they won, Dallas last week only possessed the ball for 24-23 and only ran 54 offensive plays. Very low. Their time of possession for the year is near the bottom. It's not as bad as the Colts, but it's a little over 27 minutes. That's 29th in the league. Steelers still have second best time of possession, 33-13. They ran 68 plays last week, and the Steelers' opponents are running just 53.8 plays per game. That's the lowest in the league. How do you play good defense? You play less defense. 53.8 plays a game is very little. Um, how about this? Since 1970, the Cowboys lead the NFL with 106 primetime wins. The Steelers are second with 98. That's a big thing you're going to hear all week if you haven't already is these are basically two of the biggest, most sought after storied franchises ever. They're the only two teams that have met three times in the Super Bowl. And they play a lot of primetime games, and they're pretty good at it. This episode is bought, brought to you by our buddies over at Bet Online, the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything football, from the NFL to college. Bet Online is every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. When the game's over, head on over to the online casino to get in on a game of blackjack or poker or one of the 150 different slot games they have. Head to the website today and use promo code BELIEVE, all caps, B-L-E-A-V. Get in on the action. Bet online. The game starts here. We're going to do some nuggets here when the Steelers have the ball. Tomorrow we'll talk about when the Cowboys have the ball, do some predictions and some miscellaneous stuff as well. Steelers are throwing the ball on 46.3% of their offensive snaps. Only three offenses are lower. 
On first down, just two teams run the ball a higher percentage of the time than the Steelers. We're going to get into some of this down stuff. The Steelers use 14 personnel and 13 personnel at the NFL's highest rate. They're also 28th in their usage of 11 personnel with three receivers on the field. And their percentage of 14 would probably be higher if Michael Pruitt wasn't hurt. So you're going to see a lot of tight ends on the field as usual. Dallas's defense allows 355.3 yards per game, seventh worst in the league. The Steelers are only producing 7.3 points in the first half of games this year. However, Dallas allows 17 points on average in the first half. So a lot of teams start fast against Dallas. We'll see. Justin Fields' 70.6 completion percentage is seventh best among all qualified quarterbacks. How about this picking stuff? No receiver in the league has more receiving yards this year without a touchdown than George Pickens. Hopefully this does not turn into a Deontay Johnson situation. He's received 26.6% of Fields' targets. Only nine receivers have a higher target share. And 15 pass catchers have a higher targets per route run than Pickens. Pickens 12.9's average depth of target is the eighth highest, while his yards per route run is also eighth. His 50% team air yard share is only behind Tara McLaurin and Malik Neighbors. So in terms of all the yardage when the ball is in the air to its intended targets, 50% of that yardage is Pickens. Pat Fryermuth has 12 career touchdowns. All have come in the red zone. He's not scored from distance. He's the only tight end in the league that has four plus catches in every game this year. He had an 80% plus route participation the past two weeks after failing to reach that mark in week one or two. He wasn't even close in those two weeks. During the first two weeks of the season, Fryermuth played just six of a possible 37 snaps out of 12 personnel. Now, with Pruitt sidelined the last two weeks, Fryermuth has played 29 of a 39 snaps out of 12 personnel. Two tight ends, two receivers. Pretty crazy, though, that they might not envision him as part of that package. I mean, six of 37. However, tight ends are only averaging 2.8 yards of receptions per game against Dallas, which is the fourth fewest. Fields has 33 pass attempts when using play action. Only six quarterbacks have more. And all but one of those that have more have more total pass attempts. So if you throw more, you get a better chance to rack up the play, pass, uh, play action attempts. So he's pretty much at the top of the league in terms of percentage. Daniel Jones attempted 40 passes last week, sacked just once. With Parsons and Lawrence out of this game, the rest of the defensive players remaining only have four sacks this year. Steers 3.7 average yards per rush is only better than four offenses. However, Pittsburgh's 16 runs of 10 or more yards is the sixth most in the league. Dallas has given up 17 such runs. Only four defenses have allowed more. The Steelers' 2.69 average rushing yards after contact per carry is only better than the Bears, Dolphins, and Cowboys. There is an opportunity here, though, for explosive runs. I mean, I absolutely think that, especially if you're running a lot of plays. I mean, they gave up 464 rushing yards between week two and three. I mean, two games, 464 rushing yards. Crazy. Uh, they also have the lowest percentage of run plays that result in no gain or a loss. Najee now has 70 plus yards from scrimmage in seven straight games. Doesn't quite seem like it, but last week was through the air. The Steelers' success rate on running back runs on first down is only better than the Cowboys. <laughs> so, running back runs on first downs. These are the worst two teams in the league in that regard. Fields is scrambling on 10% of his dropbacks. That's fifth highest percentage in the league. They're designing rushing attempts for Fields on 20% of their rushing attempts, 
fourth highest percentage among quarterbacks. And as a result, he's averaging 9.3 carries per game this season. I think that's about where you want him to be. Dallas's red zone defense is only better than Carolina's and Miami's. But Pittsburgh's red zone offense is only better than five teams. The Dallas defense allows a set of downs to turn into a new set of downs or touchdown 74% of the time. Only six defenses are worse. Last thing I got for you here is, if you, I'm sure you've watched every Steeler game. This might add up to you. The Steelers' opponents have only gotten three first downs via penalty where the Steelers have gotten 12 first downs via penalty. I'm not saying that's a luck thing or anything like that. It's not. It's, you know, a hold or whatever, you know. I mean, a a DPI downfield that was earned. But I just found that interesting. That's a big discrepancy in terms of first downs generated by penalties this year. All right, that's a wrap. Good stuff. Uh, We will break down the other side of the ball, predictions, some general thoughts as well. Um, might the Steelers be in the market for a wide receiver? I think it's a possibility. This Devontae Adams stuff is sort of interesting, but I do not want to harp on it in an Iuk like fashion, in an Iuk like fashion that you know, talk about every minute of every day. Something happens, we will react. Over and out.